So we're going to start on our second type of sequence here. Um, here we're going to be dealing with geometric sequences. Earlier we did the arithmetic, and just to remind you, the difference there is that the arithmetic sequences you're always adding the same thing between terms. There was that constant difference, like plus three, plus three, plus three, or minus three, minus three, minus three. Geometric sequences are going to have the case where you're either going to be multiplying or dividing by the same number between each term in the sequence. And this is called your common ratio, or R. Now, if R is greater than 1, it's going to be an increasing number, an increasing sequence. They'll get number, each term will get bigger and bigger. And if R is less than 1, it's going to be a decreasing sequence. Each thing will get littler and littler and littler. And if you have a negative R, the signs will alternate. So the first term will be positive, second term will be negative, then you have positive, negative, positive, negative. So just be aware of that. So much like the arithmetic sequence, t sub n is referring to the value of the nth term. a sub n, or a, sorry, is still the first term, and n is still the nth term, or term number, another way to look at it. Now there's a few things in this formula that we want to make sure you guys do. Um, it's not shown to you on the formula sheet, but you'll need to remember it. There's an invisible time sign between the a and the r, and you definitely want to put brackets around the n minus 1. So little times and then brackets there. And in your calculator, that would be something like a times r, and then you use the little button that looks like this, little hat, and then bracket n minus 1 to get your power. Okay, and then whatever numbers you need to plug in there, like 2 or 3 or whatever it is. So, an example for us here could be for a geometric sequence, we could have things like, what about 2? And then what if we times every single thing by 3? So 2 times 3 is 6, times 3 is 18, times 3 gets us to 24, sorry, not 24, 54. So the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, again the n is like the counting number, which term am I in, where am I in the sequence, and the tn is the actual value there. So in this case, they're all being times by 3, times by 3, times by 3. So here a would be equal to 2, r would be equal to 3, and then n, depending on what you need, you'll put it in. So a bit of a hint for you guys, if it's not obvious, um, what the r value is, you got to be able to figure it out. Um, and sometimes the numbers are small decimals and things, so this is your little formula here to use. You always want to use, um, basically, taking any term and divide it by the term in front of it. So if you have two consecutive terms, you need to divide it by the term in front of it. So if we number these ones, that's term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4. To figure out what r is going to be, I could take any pair of these, as long as they're consecutive, and I'm going to take the larger term, so in this case term 2, and divide it by the one in front of it. So I'm going to take 90 divided by 120. In my calculator that tells me it's 0 0.75, and just to double check, cause sometimes it's good, I could take another set here. How about 4 and 3? So if I took the fourth term, 50.625, and divide it by the term in front of it, 67.5, again in my calculator, I still get 0 0.75. So since I've got both of those the same, I'm double checking that r is equal to 0 0.75 here. So again, take any term and use the one in front of it, so 90 divided by 120, or 67.5 divided by 90. Looking at one more example for that. Again, taking the term, so we could take here 60, and divide it by the one in front of it. So 1, 2, 3, 4. How that's written out here is T2 divided by T1, so the value, remember that the T numbers are down on the bottom, the N's are on the top, so the value T2 would be 60 divided by T1, which is 50. 60 divided by 50 gets you 1.2, and we could check another pair there. 
we could use 72 and the term in front of it. So we could do 72 divided by 60. And again, you get 1.2. R in your calculator is, so R is going to be equal to 1.2. Right? So it's always to find R, take the term and then divide it by the value of the term in front of it. So it's always the one further along and then go back one step. Okay? So in the next video, we're going to look at how to actually use this formula to find the nth term.